Hey, if you're looking to create a financial model for an e-commerce business where you want to model both one-time e-commerce purchases by your customers as well as subscriptions. So if you have like a, a monthly subscription where you send product to your customers on a regular basis, we can model that in this template as well. And so I'm going to walk you through this particular spreadsheet template, show you how it works, how to fill it out, how to get what you need in terms of a pro forma for potential investors and lenders, and just walk you through that step by step. Before I dive too far into that, just a little bit of background. My name is Adam Huxima. I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub. And over the last decade, we've helped thousands of entrepreneurs create financial projections through both web application tool that we've built to today, focusing more on our financial projection spreadsheet templates. And we have built over 100 industry-specific spreadsheet templates. And today, we're specifically focused on this e-commerce plus subscription financial model. And so I'm going to put a link to this template in the description of the video below so you can go grab the template and follow along that way and create your own model. And with that, we'll go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so I'm starting on the at a glance tab, and this is kind of the end of the process. So after you've finished all of entering in all of your assumptions, you will get this nice profit and loss table at a glance, some key summary data, so some KPIs that you know potential investors and lenders might want to know. So conversion rates, e-commerce orders, average order quantity, average order value, your margins, your R and ARR on the subscription side, LTV to CAC, so all these, you know buzzwords that investors might be looking for, we will help you calculate those things in the model. And you'll see some different charts and graphs as well here. You will also get a five-year income statement summary, five-year cash flow summary, five-year balance sheet summary, and then the income statement, cash flow, and balance sheet broken down by month for each of the five years. So you see that monthly level detail as well as the annual summaries at a high level. All right, so in order to produce all these reports, then we have a little bit of work to do. And so I'm going to walk through these input assumption tabs here just to, to show you how this works. So we're going to assume that you are putting in $50,000 of your own money here, and you're also looking to raise equity funding of $500,000. Um, so we've entered in those investments here, month zero for the existing investment you've already put into the business, and month one, so like the first month of the projections here, would be when your outside investor money comes in here. The accounts payable terms here, this is just assuming that you're paying most of your bills in the month that the expense is incurred. So 80% of your bills paid in the, in the month that the expense is incurred here. Fixed assets. So, you know, you may have a trademark for a brand if it's e-commerce brand, and you may have some employee equipment. You know, if you're operating your own warehouse or distribution center as well, of course, you may have additional fixed assets that you could put in this box as well. And then we are going to show a few different loans here. So we've got the ability to add you know, multiple loans, or you could put in one large loan, but let's say you have different tranches of loans here that come in over time. So you've got business loan one, two, and three, and various interest rates. And so this table here, this how much cash do I need, what it is going to do is after you're all done, so after you've entered in all your revenue assumptions, all your expenses, and all of your fixed assets and sources and uses of cash, this will aim to calculate, okay, how many months is it going to take until you reach positive cash flow? And so based on the numbers we have in there right now, it says 25 months. And so then it's going to say, okay, well, if it's 25 months, how much cash do I need to reach that point based on the numbers I've entered in? And so this is saying right now we need 965,000 in cash. Good news is we have 1.2 million in cash in the model. And so this says, hey, starting cash is sufficient. So if after you go through this first tab and this table doesn't make a lot of sense yet, don't worry. You know, come back to it at the end after you've adjusted all of your assumptions. Come back to this at the end and make sure that, hey, you're in the clear. Starting cash is sufficient. All right, so let's look at the input revenue tab. So we have the, the idea here of this kind of visitor or customer acquisition. So let's say we're going to run an advertising budget here. We're going to spend, you know, an increasing monthly amount on ads. And we have this cost per click. And so you may be able to do some keyword research, maybe Google AdWords keyword planner tool would be a free way to get an estimate of how much it's going to cost per click for keywords that you're interested in. And that will ultimately give you, okay, here's the number of visitors from paid advertising. Now, hopefully you also get some organic paid visitors and organic traffic can often take a while to really ramp up. And so maybe you start out slow and, and grow that over time. So you'll get a total number of website visitors. From there, you will have a conversion rate. So, you know, 7% conversion rate may be way too high. It kind of depends. If you're doing a great job with your ads and your organic traffic is very, very targeted, maybe 7% is possible, but let's get this down to maybe something more reasonable, like 3%. And let's say our average number of items per order is 
by me making these changes to this model, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow up our our income statement. We're probably gonna lose a bunch of money. So yeah, we are we are seeing a, a nice loss there, and probably adjusting how long it's gonna take us to reach cash flow positive. But that'd be a good example for us to go through and, and kind of see how that changes. So we can now play around with adding our different categories or different products that we offer, put in the average price, the month that we're gonna launch it. So we could say, well, we're only gonna start with two products, but then month 13, we're gonna add product category three and four. And you can have your cost of your product and then the cost of shipping and packaging paid by the seller. And then this is the breakdown of what percentage of your orders fall into each product category. So we're saying 20% of the products that are sold are product category one, 15% are product category two and so on. So the main thing you want to make sure of is that this adds up to 100% so that you have that broken down between the different product categories. Here you have the ability to say, hey, we're going to increase our annual price prices and our annual cost, cost of goods sold, is going to increase by some percentage as well. well let's, let's drop this down a little bit. Hopefully inflation isn't quite so high. So we'll drop that down a bit. Subscription revenue. Okay, so this, this is really all of your one-time purchases, right? So customers come to the site, place a one-time order. We also have the ability to do that subscription revenue. And so here we've got, again, this conversion rate of website visitors to subscribers. We have an annual churn rate. So this would be the percentage, the annual percentage of customers that have subscribed that end up canceling their subscription. So we're saying 20% annually here. And then we have the ability to set different launch months for the subscription. So you can have monthly and quarterly and annual. And here you have the ability to say, okay, what's the a single payment amount. So what we're saying here, this is a monthly subscription at $25 a month. It says months covered by each payment, just one month. Okay, so this is monthly. You're gonna pay this monthly. And then shipments per payment period, we're gonna ship once per month. Here's the cost of the product per shipment and the cost of shipping per shipment, right? So compare this to our annual subscription, right? So the annual subscription is $260. We're paying $260 all upfront is one annual payment and that's going to cover their subscription for 12 months and they will get 12 shipments during that time okay so that's the way you can kind of break this down in the quarterly quarterly is going to cover three months at a time and they're going to get one shipment per payment period right so per quarter they're going to get one shipment per quarter again we can add annual subscription growth rate here uh, or price growth i should say and that will ultimately calculate your subscription revenue and cost of goods sold. We have a little deferred revenue calculation here because when you are accepting these annual subscriptions, you're actually, you have some deferred revenue. So that will show up actually as a liability because people have already paid you in advance and you haven't really fulfilled or earned that income yet. All right, we also have this inventory model here that what you'll be able to do is enter in your opening inventory, the first order amount, so this is kind of before before that first order, you've got 25,000 on hand, right? Let's say you have 25,000 to start with, and then your next order in the model is gonna be 60,000, and it's gonna hit in month three. We're gonna order that in month three. And then we're saying order every three months. So you can set how often do you want to order. So let's say we order every three months, and we wanna have a 10% order buffer that just gives us a, a little bit of wiggle room to be able to order a bit more than, than maybe we are forecasting that we need our minimum order amount going forward. So we're saying the first order is 60,000, but then going forward after that, those ongoing orders are gonna be 100,000 minimum. And our months between order and delivery, so we're saying it's gonna take two months, we're gonna place an order, it's gonna take two months to receive that. And we're gonna to have to pay 50% upfront due when we order and 50% two months later upon delivery. So all of these assumptions end up creating a bunch of kind of cash flow nightmares, right? Like you know, you gotta figure out the cash flow of you gotta pay deposits and then wait for delivery to show up and make that final payment. And so we can't actually start selling the inventory until we have the inventory on hand. And so that's what this mess down here, these calculations here, is trying to help model that the cash flow nightmare that is inherent in this type of business. So you'll see you know, cash for deposits and cash for final payments coming in and out. You'll see inventory beginning and ending inventory balances here based on those orders that you have in the model. All right, the rest of this on this tab is really just a series of calculations. So let's go over to our input other expenses here and I'll show you a few things that we can do. 
So we have some various operating expenses, consultants, maybe platform development, maybe you're kind of building your own Shopify website. Maybe you have remote office, office expenses. Now, I'll point out here that you can have an expense in three different kind of formats. You can have a fixed dollar amount, so that means it'd be the same dollar amount you know, every month. You can have an expense as a percentage of revenue, so this would be like credit card processing fees. And then you can have a per FTE or per full-time equivalent employee expense. And so remote office expense is a good example of a per FTE expense. So we're saying we're paying our employees 500 bucks a month for their remote office setup. And you've got a marketing firm, we're gonna pay 1500 bucks a month, SEO firm, 2,500 bucks a month. Then we have some other expenses here that we have set as a percentage of revenue. So let's say general admin development, sales and marketing, you can set these as a percentage of revenue and let's just make that standard across the board. Here, you'll notice that we have this starting in year two. So maybe, and a lot of times what clients like to do is in the first year, they might like to be really specific about the expenses that they expect to have, but beyond 12 months out, it's really hard to know exactly, exactly how much am I gonna spend on these various expenses. And so a lot of times what folks will do is kind of shift in years maybe two or maybe three, four, and five to having expenses as a percentage of revenue to kind of scale with the business. All right, we also have an input salaries and dividends tab here where you can add different positions like a CEO, we have a marketing lead, a admin staff, customer support. And so you'll be able to put in salaries, benefits, what month that position will start, what month they'll end. So it's a 60 month model, a five year model. So we just have all these kind of going to the end of the model. And you can put the number of this particular employee we expand this, we can see that a little better. The so number of this particular employee is one. So if you had a situation where you said, we're gonna hire three of this position all at once, you know, maybe customer support agents, we're gonna have three of them all at once, you could just put three in there. That would add them all automatically. We also have the ability to have customers or a scaling staff team. So let's say you wanted to, rather than adding customer support on a particular month, you wanna add customer support or some other position as you hit certain revenue milestones. And so here we can say, we're gonna add customer support team for every 100,000 in monthly revenue, we're gonna add another customer support cost of 65,000. All right, so that brings us back to kind of where we started and we'll see that, yeah, we have a net loss for the first few years as we're kind of building up the brand, building up the customer base and that subscription base, and then kind of swing to profitability out here in year five. So again, if you have any questions, about how to fill the model out or need it customized for your unique situation, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. Again, I put a link to the template in the description of the video below. And also as a thank you for making it here to the very end of the video, we've put a link to a form. You can fill out that form to get a discount on your template. And so feel free to fill out that form. We'll email you a discount code that you can use to get a discount at checkout. So, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Hope this has been helpful, thanks.